Listen, this new flu variant is doing some aggressive, nasty work this season, okay? The subclade K flu variant has evaded what we predicted would be covered in our vaccines. Now, we're seeing that our flu vaccines, though they're not as great as we wanted them to be, it does look like they still will give you some protection, 30 to 40% from being seriously ill or hospitalized. But let me tell you about this flu. It is on the rise, it's hitting aggressively, and it's hitting early, and I am already seeing it, not only in patients, but in family members. So with the subclade K flu variant, its surface, its H3N2 surface, has changed in at least seven different locations. These are seven locations that we weren't predicting with our flu vaccine. And I know we saw it earlier, this variant in Japan and in Canada and in the UK. Well, now it's here. Okay, it's here. And already this flu season, we've had 4.6 million cases in the United States. We've had 49,000 hospitalizations and at least 1,900 deaths from the flu. And we've had at least three pediatric deaths. And so if you're listening and you're just kind of thinking about things the way they used to be in the good old days where if your kid had the flu, eh, whatever, let's just watch them at home. If your child is young, um, especially age four or younger, Listen, take the minute they have high fever because kids have been passing away from the flu. It's a mess, I'm telling you. And the people who are at really high risk of getting sick are the very young, like I mentioned, but also elderly people over the age of 65, immunocompromised people, people on chemotherapy, people, people who have had transplants. Also, if you're someone with chronic lung disease. And so if you have any of these things, please go into your doctor because the good thing about the flu is that we do have Tamiflu. Adults and children can get Tamiflu, and that is an antiviral medicine that will help to fight the flu, okay? So decrease your risk for hospitalizations or from complications. You know, I think a lot of times we overuse the word flu, and we take it to mean like a cold. The flu is not just a common cold. It can lead to high fevers, okay? Like fevers higher than 103 degrees Fahrenheit, higher than 104 degrees Fahrenheit. It can, you know, give your kid like a glassy look in the eye, have them being just a little bit kind of apathetic, lackluster. It can cause body aches. It can cause headaches. It can definitely cause upper respiratory symptoms where your kid is coughing or even wheezing. These are some of the symptoms. The good thing is that there are things that we can do to prevent it. And especially now that we're in the holiday season with a lot of travel, honey, the flu is just going to continue to be a nasty son of a gun. So what can you do? One you can get the immunization against the flu. No, it's not as great as I would love it to be, but especially if you are, are a high-risk patient, like someone who's 65 or older, then decreasing your chance of being hospitalized up to 40% is, is, not a, uh, is not nothing, right? Okay, I wouldn't mind having my hospitalization and illness risk less than 40%, you know, decreased by 40% if I were over 65. And it's recommended that children as young as six months get the flu vaccine. So anywhere from six months to all the way up, okay? And a lot of people say, oh, I don't like the flu vaccine because the flu vaccine gives me the flu. No, it doesn't, okay? The flu vaccine that we're giving is an inactive virus, okay? It's a dead virus. And so you can't actually get the flu. What you do get is your body's immune system reacting. And so I'm not gaslighting you. A lot. If you get the flu vaccine and you get flu-like symptoms, that is your body's immune system reacting to the antigen that is the flu vaccine. So I'm not saying that you don't feel sick. I'm just telling you that the flu vaccine is not giving you the flu, okay? You could take that to the bank. The other thing, what's the other thing, child? Um, try to prevent it, wear masks. I know that since, you know, since C-19 and since the pandemic has been over, a lot of people are getting away from masks. That got po politicized. Oh, my body, my choice, I don't wanna wear a mask, which is really okay. I mean, if we know that masks decrease you getting respiratory infections and these droplets, like what is the big deal? But anyway, please make the choice to wear a mask, especially if you're immunocompromised or if you're in crowded situations or if you're hopping on a plane this holiday season, I recommend putting on a mask. Also a lot of hand washing, hand washing, hand sanitizer. Um, if you're coughing, please, the old fashioned dab, the old fashioned dab, don't cough on your hand and they go shaking people's hands. That's nasty. Okay, please be clean. Wash your hands frequently. And um, again, just be mindful of your space. If you're someone who's having symptoms, if you're coughing, if you're hacking, if you're having a fever, please be respectful and don't go and expose other people, especially not elderly people. 
And I don't care how cute you think your kids are, your little three-year-olds and your little four-year-olds, oh, they're so cute. If they are sneezing and coughing and sick, do not let them go and grin up in their grandparents' faces, okay? Because the grandparents are more likely to get very sick. All right, but that's kind of what's going on as far as this flu variant. It's subclade K, H3, N2. It's here. And even according to the waste management that we do, that's one way that we do surveillance as far as the, the flu. It's increased. The, the, flu, the, the flu virus, it's increased by 390% just from November to December. And it's showing no signs of plateauing. Okay, so take home points. The flu is real. We're having very high cases still on the rise. You can prevent the flu, at least prevent getting very sick from the flu or being hospitalized. You can prevent that with the flu vaccine. There are treatments, even for children, getting the Tamiflu is one of the treatments. And um, certainly hand washing, wearing masks, uh, things of that nature, not sneezing on your hand, not being nasty. It's just one way to prevent it. So pay attention. The season is bad. The flu is a son of a gun. Oh, and for my members, let me give y'all an update. I told y'all that my um, ninth grade daughter had a fever of 104.5 earlier, you know, last weekend. And her fever, you know, fluctuated 101, 99. And she did end up getting better. She went to school. She did fine. Um, don't you know that <laughs> a few days later, her twin brother, my ninth grade son, got sick as well. He was having some coughing, upper respiratory infection symptoms, kept him out of school. He missed some finals on Friday. And lo and behold, his lo and behold, his fever went up to 103.6. Okay. And he's been battling the fever from, that was the highest it got, but it's been 101 to 99.3 back and forth. And the thing with him, he does have a history of asthma. And so we've been doing a whole lot of albuterol nebulized treatments for him. He doesn't have COVID. I did test him. And, um, you know, not that I know the variant, but I'm sure it's subclade K, influenza A, a mess. He's not eating much, but remember, that's okay if for, you know, even several days, if they're not eating a lot of food, as long as they're staying hydrated. He's loading up with Gatorade, Capri Suns, orange juice, you know, all of those things. We're keeping the fever down. I did hear him hollering out and screaming at a video game, so I know he's feeling better today. Today is Sunday, December 21st, 2025. Um, still not eating much. He did some saltines. He did a little chicken noodle soup. He said he doesn't feel like any soup, but I'll probably try to make him eat at least some of the broth. I really don't like it when my kids are sick. Not that anyone does, but it really makes you feel kind of vulnerable and helpless, you know, when you're supposed to be your kids' protectors. And what's really bad is that my parents are here. They're in their 70s. And so I've been done a very good job at keeping the kids away from them. And thankfully... They don't have any any signs of any fever or infectious disease. So that part is good. But I'm telling you, this flu season is real. So I had mentioned on my other members only that, you know, oh, even if my daughter has the flu, she's healthy. I won't give her Tamiflu. I take that back. Okay. So I missed the window for her. But if you do suspect the flu in your kid, they have a high fever, please go ahead and take your kid to the pediatrician. Or if you have it yourself, go to the doctor. And if you catch those symptoms within time, you know, the, the proper time, like within 72 hours, then look at the pros, look at the cons, but strongly consider Tamiflu because this ain't no regular flu. And we've already, you know, had three children to die from the flu this year. And we've had 1,900 people to die in the United States this year. I feel like that's not being said that much, right? We've had 1,900 people to die from the flu this year. It's not a joke. It's not a common cold. So I want y'all to please just pay attention, protect yourselves, and understand that the communication that we used to have, like from the CDC, it looks like things are a little bit different with this administration. But um, pay attention and, and please don't lose your life over something that is preventable and treatable. Subclade K H three N two flu variant is here. It is kicking tails and taking names. All right.